Chant and dance as much as possible in this human form of life. Om Gyana Thimirandhasya, Gyana Anjana Shalakaya, Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha, Namom Vishnupadaya Krishna Prashthaya Bhutale, Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Iti Namine, Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine, Nirvishesha Shunya Vadi Paschatya Deshadarine, Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunityananda, Shri Advaita Kadadhar, Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Brinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare. Hare Krishna. So a few days back, the last month to be precise, we had the most celebrated pastime of Shri Shri Radha Damodar. The whole month of Kartik is celebrated because of this pastime. Of course, various pastimes took place, but the most prominent that took place is the pastime of Mother Yashoda binding the small waistline, small belly of of the Supreme Lord as Shri Krishna. So Dham means rope and Udara means the belly. So that Lord whose belly was bound with ropes is called as Dhamodar. And as far as this pastime of Dhamodar is concerned, we have heard so many commentaries of so many predecessor Acharyas, Srila Prabhupada, uh, Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur, Sripad Harisuri and so on and so forth. And there are so many different unheard meanings and connections that arise from this pastime. Apart from the various commentaries and stories that we have heard, there is one very nice history that comes from the south part of India, the southern part of India, as far as the pastime of Damodar is concerned. We all would have heard of the sage Vasishta, Vasishta Muni, very famous sage from the south part of India. So once Vasishta Muni was sitting on the banks of river Kaveri, and uh, just like we have, when we go to Mayapur, Ganga is the most prominent, most worshipable. And likewise, when, you, when we go to Vrindavan, Jamuna is the most worshipable. Likewise, in the south part of India, Kaveri is the most worshipable, especially as far as the farmers are concerned. It is the river Kaveri that flows into their fields and nourishes their crops. So Vashishta Muni was sitting on the banks of Kaveri. And then when he took his bath and came out, like a proper brahmana, he was starting to do his mantras. So he was chanting his Gayatri. And when he was closing his eyes, he was meditating upon the Supreme Lord. And it is said that Vashishta Muni had a very beautiful Shaligram Shila. You see, even today, there are devotees who have deities. And then we have devotees who worship Shaligram Shilas that are found in the Kali Gantaki River in Nepal. So Vashishta Muni had Shaligram Shilas and in his meditation, he was offering different paraphernalia for the Supreme Lord. So he was doing mental meditation, mansik to the Supreme Lord. And it is said that in his mind, he offered a very nice throne bedecked with jewels like emeralds, rubies, gold, silver, and so on and so forth. So Shaligram was in his mind placed on a nice jewel throne and he was worshipping the Supreme Lord that way and in his mind he offered a nice Tulsi garland. He was offering Ganga water, he was offering Kaveri water, everything was Mansi going on in his mind. And at that time it is said that Vashishta Muni, because he was a sage and we find in those days all the sages, all the Brahmanas, they had a cow in their veranda. And Vashishta Muni was no exception. So he had a cow by the name Nalini. And this cow Nalini was a Kamadenu cow, a wish-fulfilling cow. So because of the presence of Nalini, the Kamadenu cow, he would get everything that he desired. So he would get the milk, he would get honey, he would get butter, he would get ghee. And every day he would do nice Panchamrit Abhishek for his Shaligram deity. And this went on for many days. And as we know, Vashishta Muni's most noble wife by the name Arundhati was there with him. So one day it so happened that she had prepared fresh butter and she gave butter to her husband, noteworthy husband, that is Vashishta Muni. And when Vashishta Muni got the butter, 
he did not have the intention of exploiting the butter for himself, but he was so great that from that butter, he made a deity form of Sri Krishna. So just like we have in, in the past times of Jagannath, we have a famous personality by the name Dasya Bauri, who everywhere could just see the eye of Jagannath. Likewise, Vashishta Muni, even in that butter, he made that butter, he transformed that butter into a beautiful, small deity form of the Lord. And then he would worship that deity butter form of the Lord. So it so happened that once in his mind, when he was worshiping, uh, this small boy in one of the neighboring, from neighboring villages, he happened to cross by. And when he passed through Vashishta Muni, Vashishta Muni's eyes was closed. And this boy was very small. And naturally, what he, when small children, they see something to eat. They desire in their heart just increases. It's, it's an unstoppable temptation. This boy was no exception. So this boy, when he saw Vashishta Muni's eyes was closed, he slowly sneaked in to his ashram. And in front of Vashishta Muni, he was with a small baby hands. He was eating the butter that was there. And now dear devotees, just to remind, it is not normal butter, but this butter was made into a form of Sri Krishna. And this small boy, he did not know what the importance is. So he was eating this butter form of the Lord. And now when Vashishta Muni opened his eyes, it was a thunderbolt to his heart. His, his Lord of his life was being eaten by a small child. Now we see as far as deity worship upachars are concerned, the level of purity that has to be maintained is very high. What to speak about shaligrams, the level is way higher than even deities. We constantly keep doing archamans. Uh, when we visit the washroom, we take a bath, so on and so forth. So for deity worship, the level of purity that has to be maintained is very high. And here, this small child, not knowing the importance, was eating the butter, butter form of the Lord, and he was putting every butter inside his mouth. So when Vashishta saw this, this was too much for him. And his eyes were burning in anger. And now he wanted to chastise the small child. So when the child understood, he saw the fiery eyes of Vashishta Muni. He started running. He started running for his life. And Vashishta Muni immediately left all his bhajan and started running behind this child to teach him a lesson. The child was running. Vashishta was running. And the child was running in greater speed. And Vashishta was running in greater speed. And this went on for some time. And finally, this child, he hid behind a small bakula tree. And this child was so innocent. He thought that probably if he hides behind a bakula tree, Vashishta Muni will not get to know. So the child was thinking of tricking Vashishta Muni in, in order to save his life. But Vashishta Muni being such a powerful sage, being such a powerful Muni, he spotted the small child behind a bakula and held the child by his hand and brought him close to him. And he decided to teach this small child a lesson. So what he did was he took rope and with his rope, he tried to tie this child to the bakula tree. And now interestingly, what had happened was across the sea, there were a few sages who had witnessed this pastime, uh, who had witnessed that a small child had come and eaten the butter form of the Lord that Vashishta was worshipping. So now they also came across the river to help Vashishta to teach this boy a lesson. So first, Vashishta Muni, with all the ropes that he had, he tried to bind this small child. And every time he would try, the rope was two fingers too short. The child, the waist of that child was only this much. But every time Vashishta would try, it was always two fingers too short. So now, when the other sages, they saw this, they brought all the robes that they had from their bhajan kutir, from their home. They brought all the robes and now all the robes were combined one after another, one after another, one after another. And now with all the robes, when they tried to bind this child, still it was two fingers too short. Still again, the child was not, was not being bound. So Vashishta Muni was completely perplexed. He was thinking to himself, what is going on? I am Vashishtha and here are so many sages, but why is it that I am failing in front of this small child? So he just went into meditation 
and ask the Lord, my dear Lord, who is he? And why is it that I'm not able to bind him? At that time, it is said that the Supreme Lord gave realization in his heart. There was a spark of realization in the heart of Vashishta Muni. And Vashishta very soon understood that this boy is none other than Shri Krishna. He remembered the whole pastime of Radha Damodar. He remembered the whole pastime as to how Krishna in Vrindavan would steal butter. And when he would steal butter, he would not only eat, but he would also give it to his friends. He would also give it to his monkeys. And this would go on for multiple days together. So at that time, Vashishta would remember the whole trajectory of that pastime. And he was thinking to himself that probably this has to be Sri Krishna. And even in that pastime, we, we find Canto 10, Chapter 9, Maya Yashoda tried multiple times, multiple times, but every time Sri Patsanathan Goswami and Shukadev Goswami, they make this point that it was always two fingers too short. And then finally, Mother Yashoda called all the Vrajagopis. And when the ropes from their houses came, still it was two fingers too short. So we find the same parallels here, even in the past time with Vashishta. He was always trying to tie the Supreme Lord, but it was two fingers too short. So at that time, when he got the spurti, when he got the realization in his heart that this child is not just a mere mortal, but he is that same Damodar who has come to reciprocate in my life. At that time, Vashishta Muni chanted a very beautiful verse that comes from Canto 10, Chapter 9. I'll just share my screen so that we can see what the verse is. So this comes from Canto 10, Chapter 9, text 13 and 14. Shukadev Goswami gives the whole Damodar Leela in two verses to describe the opulence, to describe the Aishwarya Prakash of Sri Krishna. Shukadev Goswami there, he says, Na chantar na bahir yasya na purvam na pichaparam purva param bahish chantar jagatoya jagachaya tam matva atmajam avyaktam martya lingam madhokshajam gopika ulukale damna babanda prakritam yatha Shukadev Goswami very beautifully says na chantar na bahir yasya uh, Shri Krishna is Nacha Antar. So he has no interior. Antar means interior. So he has no interior. Na Bahir Yasa. He has no exterior. Na Purvam. He has no beginning. And Na Pichaparam. He has no end. So Krishna is described as that personality who has no exterior, no interior, no beginning, no end. He is Adhyam Purana Purusham Navayovanamcha. So that's why here it said Purva Param Bahish Chantam. Krishna is that all pervading Supreme Personality of Godhead. And Tam Matva Atmajam Avyaktam. At that time, Atmajam, there was one lady who considered Sri Krishna as her Atmaj. Atmaj means son. So there was one lady who considered Krishna as Atmajam. And Shri Krishna was Martilingam. He had come down as a mere mortal, as a normal human being, even though he's Bhagavan himself. But in Vrindavan, he was like an ordinary child. The Brajavasis was, were convinced that Krishna, he is not the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Martilingam. So he was like a normal human being. At that time, Gopika, there was one Gopika. Who was that Gopika? It was Yashoda Gopi. Gopika Ulukale Dhamna. At that time, Maya Yashoda, she took a dam, that is the rope, and tied Sri Krishna, Babanda Prakritam Yatha. She tied Krishna with the ropes to the wooden grinding motor. Actually, as Satyavrata Muni says, it was not the ropes of this world, but it was the ropes of pure love. Namam Ishwaram Satchitananda Rupam Lasat Kundalam Gokule Vrajamanam it was not the ropes of this world, but it was the ropes of pure Vatsilamai love for Sri Krishna, motherly affection. So at that time, Vashishta Muni chanted these verses in front of this boy itself, remembering the whole pastime of Damodar. At that time, when Krishna saw the devotion in the heart of Vashishta Muni, the Lord decided to reveal himself. And the Lord 
as the supreme personality of god as the same damodar imparted spiritual realization in the heart of vashishta muni when vashishta muni understood that he is the same damodar he is the same krishna he is the same brajendranandan krishna vrindavan dham he fell at the feet of damodar and said my dear lord please forgive me please forgive me shamasva maam i did not know that you are the supreme personality of godhead i did not know that my meditation has appeared in a form i did not understand that my shaligrams have come in front of me to give me their darshan my dear lord shamasva maam please forgive me and actually krishna had not taken any offense so immediately he pacified vashishta muni and it is said that vashishta muni then prayed to the supreme lord that my dear lord because in this place i got your darshan may the whole world also witness this darshan of yours we see just like when narad muni saw krishna in dwaraka in the form of jagannath this was the request that he did to shri krishna that my dear lord this form of jagannath that i have seen let the whole world witness similarly here vashishta muni in the mood of a devotee he wanted to give this benefit to everyone so he told the lord that my dear lord if in this place you reside eternally then for time immemorial all the devotees who come to this place can witness the same form of the lord that i witnessed and when the supreme lord heard this he agreed to the suggestion of vashishta muni and dear devotees this place is called as tirukannan gudi this is in the south part of india it's called as tirukannan gudi and the deity there even till day dear devotees is called as shri damodar perumal uh, because perumal in tamil means the supreme lord it means bhagavan so he is called as shri damodar perumal because it was this place where damodar bhagavan gave his darshan to vashishta muni so dear devotees what is the lesson that we can learn from this the first lesson is the supreme lord is so merciful that even if we don't have any paraphernalia even if we do worship in our mind the lord is ready to reciprocate to that love sudama had nothing he was poor but the lord was ready to reciprocate to his love kolavecha shridhar was poor but the lord was ready to reciprocate to his love similarly vashishta muni was doing his bhajan in his mind but the lord was ready to reciprocate to his love the second lesson this lord is only looking for bhakti in the heart dear devotees and nothing else as shukadev goswami very beautifully says evam sandarshita hyanga harina vritya vashyatam he says shukadev goswami makes this point that evam sandarsh sandarshita hyanga harina vritya vashyatam the lord becomes vritya to the love of the devotees so the second lesson that we learn is the supreme lord is only looking for bhakti in the heart and finally dear devotees the third and the final lesson is these pastimes that are there on the pages in the pages of shrimad bhagavatam they are not just confined to the pages of shrimad bhagavatam but these pastimes are so dynamic unlike any novel of this world pastimes that are there in the pages of shrimad bhagavatam they are so dynamic that even though they occurred 5000 years back and even though we were not a part of these pastimes the supreme lord for his sincere devotee is willing to recreate this pastime again even though he performed damodar lila 5000 years back for his sincere devotee the lord is ready to do that pastime once again which only means that if there is a pastime that is very dear to our heart and if we desire to be in that pastime the lord for us will again recreate that pastime so that it gives joy and satisfaction to our hearts in this way dear devotees the three lessons that we learn is the lord even though if we are poor the lord is ready to reciprocate to our love in the form even in the form of mansik meditation second he is only looking for bhakti in the heart and finally the third lesson that we find is the pastimes in shrimad bhagavatam are very dynamic if the devotee wants the lord can again perform this pastime for the satisfaction of the devotee in this way we find that vashishta muni apart from the various devotees who have had darshan of shri damodar bhagavan vashishta muni was one such devotee who had the darshan of the supreme lord in the south part of india in a place called as tirukannan gudi where the lord is called as shri damodar perumal 
श्री दामोदर पेरुमाल की जाय श्री दामोदर भगवान की जाय हरे कृष्ण